Hello. Tonight we're going to use the Queen Anne's Lace stamp set. It comes with several cute um, sentiments. Best wishes, wishes, thanks, hello friend, and then for the best wishes you could put on the inside celebrating all the wonderful things about you. And then um, I know you have the strength to get through this and then um, on the inside, I'll be right by your side. So I think that's a nice sweet one to have um, to send to friends um, sometimes. Hi Lisa, how are you? Um, so anyway, that's what the stamp set has. And I'm going to show you some new grid paper that Stampin' Up! has right now. It uses the new in colors and it is very bright. It has the cinnamon cider, the um, Misty Moonlight, Just Jade, the Marvelous, Mag I mean, Magenta Madness. Hi, Kay. And it also has the Bumblebee, Bumblebee. So, it has a little um, cute thing of the jars from the um, flowers for every season. So, it's like right there. Really cute. Okay. So, first I'm going to show you how I set up this um, stamp set. Um, you know, when you're using your Stamparatus, you can stamp with it all the way against the side like this. Hi, Shauna. Or you can stamp with it over, you know, any variety of distance from the side. You could stamp over here. You could stamp in the second spot. So that gives you a little bit of variety as you're um, getting ready to stamp. So on this one, I just wanted to show how I would just stamp it if I was going to die cut it out when I was finished. Hi, Patty. So I just used my old olive and inked up the small bits here in the middle. And then just, whoops, caught my paper there. And then just mash it down nicely in the middle. And then let's see how well I did, because I sometimes miss on these little stamps. Yeah, I think I'd like to put a little more up at the top. I could do a little better there. So there we go. Let's see, maybe now I'm, now I'm being picky. I want a little more down here. So there we are. Okay. So let's say I'm finished with this part. I could at this point start coloring in these. I don't think you guys can see this. I'm sorry, there we go. I could color these in with any color of marker that I think would look cute. Um, typically Queen Anne's Lace is white, but who's to say that, you know, you, it could be um, yarrow, which is a yellow topped flower, and they also, yarrow comes in pink. So you could use a lot of different um, colors to color in your flowers. Okay, so what I did on this one though, I used the bumblebee. So I just lined it up, kind of. I, I kind of wanted, I'm kind of funny about lining them up. I like them to look somewhat like they're in the right spot, but I also kind of like to get a little bit of a, oh, uh, almost like it's kind of like I'm trying to be artistic. So slightly, maybe just a little tiny bit off. Okay, so let's see how that did. All right, and you may like a brighter yellow with this. Um, you could, you know, do it in a lighter color and get kind of a brighter, maybe happier kind of look. Okay, so that's that, and what I'm gonna do now is just pretend that I'm hopping over to the Big Shot and cutting that out. So here is where I've cut it out with the nested label dies. Um, I was searching, this was the best one I had as far as getting it in the um, space that's allotted and, um, and having it be kind of vertical. It was kind of what I was going for on this one. So then I used the um, flowers here, the background on my craft. And then I just used Bumblebee as the next layer of the nested labels. So I'm gonna go ahead and layer those on. All right. 
want to kind of line up the points on this. For, for me, I find it easiest if I line up the points and get them even and then worry about the sides when I'm finished. And stick that down. And then I'm going to want to put dimensionals under that. There we are. and put dimensionals under this, under our layer here. Hope you all are having a great week. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna consider my options for ribbon. To me, I like to always have ribbon to kind of match. So I could use the um, Bumblebee colored ribbon, and that could be pretty. Let me try to get it for you, like this. But then also what would look pretty is some old olive ribbon, because we haven't really used all that much old olive on this card. So like I, I could kind of even see both of these colors looking nice. So something to consider which one do you think looks best, or if you think they both look good. You know what, people used to um, use several colors of ribbon on a card, and, and they would tie like the mat some other matching colors like around this, so that's another way that you might wanna do it. I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of fold them over like that, see how that works. Where did my scissors, here we are. Okay that aside for a second. Well, I kind of stuck this down. That wasn't so smart. Let's see if I can do it without ruining my card base, or at least ruining it in a way that shows. Okay, there we are. Okay, so I think I would like it to be just a little below halfway up. I think I'll try it here. Let's see, I'm gonna use some tear tape. And just, oh, it looks like I got my hand in a green ink pad. Oopsie. All right. I'm going to see how much I can wind this together without causing a mess. Oh, I hope I got enough green. I may not have. how I feel about that. All right, whoops, I've stuck it down again. I know y'all are surprised, not. Let's see here. Work on that again in a minute. Okay, then I'm ready to stick this back down with my tear tape. if I've got it even first. Probably a better idea. There we are. I might need to pull this old olive down because I want to get them both under the tape. And then I'm going to put another dimensional here. There we are. So then now I'm just ready to adhere this to my card base. Oops, I just pulled this loose. Hold on. There we go. Decide how I like it on there. Okay, so there we are on that. And then, now it would probably look best if I did it like this in the middle, but I th kind of think I want to have it over to the side just a little. So I'm going to put it there. 
And what I mean is I think it would look best, it would be most centered and show most of my pretty little um, twisted ribbon, but I just kind of wanted it over to the side because I think when I go to put my um, sentiment on, I think I'll want it right under there. So I can try to get it straight. Okay, so there's that. Let me turn that where you can see it for a second. And then I'm going to try to work on what sentiment I would like to use. And I did some white ones because I was considering using white on here. And I was considering putting it down here at the bottom as well, like putting it right down there, kind of like a little tiny small place. So that's an option. And of course I could always get up and um, cut this out with the um, nested label that matches it, but they're kind of wide. So to me, I kind of like to have a little small, this could even look nice if I just cut it straight with my cutter and um, put it into a um, rectangle there. So I'm thinking that I want to stamp in the um, old olive. So I think I will try the best wishes. So let's see here. Leave a little room for punching the edge. I think about that, it's not too bad. The E is not super easy to see. Hi Candy, how are you? Um, it's kind of a small E, so you kind of want to make sure you get it stamped nicely. All right, then to decide which, I think I want the squared off one because um, these are straight edges here and I think I would just kind of like to repeat that. Okay, so I'll slide it in there and see if I have it fairly even. Let's see. I think I've got it okay. And then I'll use that as a gauge with my pencil, and I'm sorry you can't see this, I know there's, but if there's enough light for me to see, then there's too much light for it to cast a nice shadow for you to be able to um, see. So, go ahead and draw that line. And cut, and then where is my Oh, I am throwing stuff, sorry about that. And then put this on here to hold it. Tuck it on in. And get it lined up here. Try to get it right where it needs to be. Whoops. Whoops. If I wouldn't stick my hand to the post-it, then we would all be set. Could have done it three times in the time that it's taken me to not stick myself to the post-it. Okay, there we are. Then let's see if we like that. All right, there we go. I think that makes a nice cute little corner piece. So there we go. And then for this card, I think that I would want to just add some um, pearls up in the corner. Now you could, you know, of course we know we can color the pearls with our Stampin' Blends. There's not an exact match for the um, Bumblebee, but there's dark colors that would go like a um, Dark Daffodil Delight and things like that that would be really pretty with it. So let's see if I can find some pearls. Here we are. I think I want a gianty one. I just like a medium. I'm kind of a medium person. It seems like I want medium more than any other thing. Okay, that's quite where I want it. There we go. And maybe another right there. All right, so I think I like the white ones. Hi, Cindy, how are you? So I don't think I'm going to color um, the pearls in. I think I'm just going to leave it like it is. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the next card. And I did it basically the same way, but 
I did it horizontally instead of vertically. So it has, um, it's kind of over here to the side, like you might put a sentiment in this area. And when I stamped it, instead of pushing it all the way to the top, I just pushed it, I pulled it down two of these little blocks. Can you see the blocks on the grid? Um, so that made it where I could put it down a little ways and um, scoot this over one like that. And then I was able to, and I actually scooted it too from the side as well. Um, so you can, you know, you don't have to keep moving this all the time. You can move your paper. And as long as you make a little mark on your paper so that you remember, on your grid paper, I mean, so that you can line it up again, like you can make a, a little square like this within in the corners so that you know where you put it for each kind of paper. You could do several cards like this and you wouldn't necessarily need to um, change the location of your stamp on your um, Stamparatus plate. Okay, so what I did on this one was just stamp it. And I wanted to show you, let me go ahead and put this away. It's a handy tool, but it takes up space. There are a lot of ways that you can color this in on this as well, but I think one of the nicest ways to color is to use this chalk marker and just kind of dot it. You don't want to um, cover up all of the green because that's what kind of keeps it looking like um, I, this is probably the most realistic I will um, when I finish at least one of the flowers I'll lift it up and show you what I mean by it looking realistic um, when you just dot these on there they look like tiny little bits of flower uh, flower petals and um, to me it looks kind of most how they look in in nature And again, you don't have to stay in the lines. If you think it would look good to have some more in certain places, you can do that. Okay, so I think you'll be able to see. Yeah, there we go. Um, it has, I have put the white chalk marker over that. So then after you've done that, you could go back in with your um, blends on top of this. So let's say that you wanted to do them yellow. You could go back in on top of the chalk marker and do it yellow on top of there. And that would be really cute. So that's a way to put this together. And then the way that the stamping, I don't know if you remembered from this one, it's just kind of a blur where it stamps on top of the, um, of the stems. And then on this one, I did it with Versamark, stamped it with Versamark, and then used white embossing powder over the top. And this just kind of gives it an even more full looking flower and um, makes it seem like it's really popping off the page, to me, in my opinion. So, to complete this card, I would mostly just put this on a piece of old olive cardstock, and then I would use my, you could put this right across with some old olive ribbon, right across here, and then make a little bow right here, that could be really cute. Um, you could also just put this over the corners like that. People do that a lot. Um, so there's a ton of different ways that you could use your ribbon. So let's see here how it works for me tonight. Let's see if it cooperates. This thing has not cooperated. I even watched a video trying to make it cooperate for me better. Yeah, not so much. Okay. Try to get this lined up on here. And the reason we do, I don't know if you all even know why we do this, the reason we put adhesive on the back and just put the ribbon here and then tie on is to save, you know, four inches at least of ribbon across here that we can use on another project sometime. Oh, Shauna, you like the white um, on the craft? Yeah, it's, it's vibrant, isn't it? I like the way it shines as well. Okay, let me try to get this straight on here. There we are. And this would probably be fine if you didn't go ahead and put this um, tear tape on it. But I like to put the tear tape because I just think it's more secure. So I like to just do that on each spot there. 
And then you can go ahead and put some um, adhesive over the top. Just make it really stuck well. And then you can take this off as well if you want. It's kind of up to you. If I can get it. All right. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna work on this a little more. I'm not supremely happy with it. Let's see if I like that better now. Yeah, I think I do. All right, then I'm gonna stick this down. Not loving how I have this cut. Seems like it's a little bit funny. Okay, so there's that. And then I'm just gonna make a bow. And the way I do it is I just make a loop, wrap around, and pull through. And then it looks crazy at first. And then I just work on this. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Marilyn. I work on this to try and even it up. And then cut. Oh, that's not very even. Hold on. Here we are. Let me get a glue dot. Put that right on there. And then I feel like you could put um, a white tab over here um, with your sentiment on it. And I think that would look really good with this because of the way that the white pops on your um, white embossed um, flowers. So that could be really cute. So let's try that with maybe the thanks. Let's see if I can get that in my old olive and I bought we have adhesive I don't know if you all know this but we have some cling adhesive that I can make all of my stamp sets into cling sets so now I'm not going to need this tape that I have on here from when we didn't have cling sets I'm not going to need that junky looking tape on my blocks now so it'll be so nice to get all of that off of here um, in the next week or so um, as I add cling to some of my stamp sets that are old favorites, but um, need to be um, have the new cling mount stuff added to them to make them like a little adhesive sheet for that. Okay, let's see how this goes. All right, there's a thanks. Back here, I think I'm going to go into the more curly looking one. Let's see how that looks. Be sure I have it even. Oh, not quite. There we go. Okay. And get that even on the other side. Hmm, I'm not sure I can see if this is even or not. Maybe I maybe have it too small. Okay. be bold and go with it as it is. There's a new one of these in the um, holiday catalog, so I think that it'll be a lot of fun. It's actually dovetailed, so I think that'll be really cute. And I'll show you all that at in a few minutes when I finish this card. It won't be much longer. I am going to um, stop the video. I hope that I don't lose you all, but I'm going to um, start and restop on my page. And um, when we when I do that, you will um, probably have to see the live again in order to get back on it because I'm gonna. I just don't want them stuck together on my page. I want to do um, two separate lives. If that makes sense. All right. Let's see here. 
Here's the front of the stamp set box, Shauna. It has Queen Anne's lace at the top, and then it has the, this piece here, and then it has just this little, it's not a very expensive set, it's photopolymer, and um, it has some nice sentiments. Uh, earlier I had talked about this one. I know you have the strength to get through this and I'll be right by your side. I thought that was really cute. So that could be a good one for a lot of situations. All right. And then I like the way this looks right out here like this, but if you don't, you know, you can always uh, do a more subtle thing. You could also do a slightly larger sentiment here uh, that could look really nice, you know, just kind of fill the space. Let's see here. somewhat straight. All right, there we are. It's kind of a simple card. Um, I'm not sure I want to put the pearls on this one. I'm not sure it wouldn't. No, I think I do. You know, more is always more. Let me put a couple up here in the corner. Oops. Too funny. Okay, I think I want it right there. I think I might better, whoops, mash it down before it gets away. All right, so now we have this card completed. And I appreciate you all watching. And I will see you next time. Back in a bit.